Um, I did a fairly basic image search. Uh, I can go back here. Uh, what I was looking for in particular in this case was backgrounds like this. Because the gag I'm going to go for has to do with, um, it's a trick that you, most of us know from riding in cars as kids. And it's when you're riding in a car and you're really bored. Maybe you don't know that so much anymore because you have stuff to do while you're in the car. But if you don't, you look out the window and you see fence posts and they're going very fast. And then you might see a field beyond that and that's going a little bit slower. So you might see mountains in the distance and those are barely moving. And then you might see the moon, that's not moving at all. That's a trick we can do by finding layers and just piling them on top of each other in After Effects. Um, I'm going to pop over to Photoshop here uh, where I have a number of background images. As a matter of fact, you can't even see this totally here. Um, this I'm going to use as trees, and it's from something I got off the internet as we get these things normally. Um, in all cases, I took these images in Photoshop and I changed them to my height. I know I'm working 1280 by 720, so if I get these very long images and then I make them all 720, I'll make them long enough to scroll. Uh, in this case, actually, you'll notice I doubled the length of this by splitting it up in the middle and then just blurring it a little bit. Um, this is going to be the mid-ground stuff, which has that as a background that I just removed. And this is going to be the far background, like that. So what I want to do is take all of these and take a cycle. I could take many different cycles if I want, but I have this cycle here and make this repeat as a layer traveling across that landscape. Let's go to After Effects. We're over here. Um, we're going to do a new composition, a 1280 by 720. I like that. Frame rate's 24. That's good. Uh, I'm going to say I want this to be 10 seconds long. And I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to shrink this down a little so I can see my whole frame. And now I'm going to start to fill my bin. I'm going to bring in those PSD documents. I'm going to bring them all in as compositions because in the compositions that they're in, I can pull out the layers I want. Uh, so, you know what? We'll try a drag and drop here. Um, if I go over here to my local disk, we should have our PSDs right here. And I'm going to try to drag them all and drop them. Wow. Okay. Seems to have gotten it. <laughs> uh, let's take a look, although I'm a little bit worried that it didn't get the full layers I want. Although maybe it did. We will find out. Uh, I'm going to go back to comp one. Uh, let's take our background layer, which is this, which is good. If I zoom out, I should be able to see how long this background layer is. Uh, here's my composition. This is that background. Ah, that works very nicely, actually. And so I can start that moving, and it's going to move at the slowest rate of all of my stuff. Um, so over 10 seconds, um, I'll have this move. Let's start here. We'll go to position, and we'll go to the end of 10 seconds, and we'll have it travel, uh, let's say, to there. like that. Now let's take the mid-ground and we'll drop that in. It's the same height, I like that, although clearly I have to make it smaller, uh, which isn't too hard to do. I can just scale it and I'm going to hold down my shift key as I scale it. Good. And now we'll shove it down here, let's say. I sort of like that. Um, and let's key it. This is going to be my mid-ground. Uh, we will go here. Um, position. And this is going to have to move much faster than that. Ooh, but do I have the length to make it move much faster? I'm going to stretch it, which I think I can get away with. We'll try like that. Yeah, that sounds better. Let's go back over here. Um, I put a keyframe on it and don't want it, so let's 
go down here and delete this keyframe. I can just select it, delete, uh, and I'll start this here like that. And we'll have it get to, let's see how that reads right now. We'll just test it. Ah, yes, see that? That's called the parallax effect. Um, in front of that, I'm going to put my actual cycle, which is here, uh, which should play millions of colors. It's 24 frames. Good. Uh, if I go here, we should be able to see that this is doing that. Um, we have to make a composition that's going to cover 10 seconds on this. That's only one second now. So let's do what we did last week, a new composition. It's going to be uh, 10 seconds long. We're going to call this um, cycle. And we're going to drag this into it. And I'm just going to duplicate this layer 10 times. Control D, see that? Keyboard equivalent. Control D, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's stretch these out. We'll put one there. We'll put one there. So maybe I'm better off doing it from the bottom. We'll start this one here, and then they should automatically jump to the right place. Good. 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 Okay. Good. Good. Okay, now that should be 10 cycles. Let's see if it is. Good. Although actually it's funny, it's missing a layer, but I, I can deal with that. Um, what I mean by that is I'm gonna stop this playing for a sec. If I head back down here to Photoshop, ah, you know why I didn't save this? Let's see if we resave it. File, save, and I should be able to go here and reload this. And, and let me show you what I mean here. We'll go up here. Oh, no, it already got it. That's what I want it to do. I, I don't know why it has the T. It just kind of does it that way, okay? Good. Now, let's put this composition into this composition. We'll go to comp one. I'll drag cycle. And we can plunk that right in the middle on the top. Oh but it has a white background. That's gonna kill me. Let's go back over here to our Cycle 2 PSD. Show me Cycle 2 PSD. Um, I'm gonna head back over here to Photoshop. Uh, we have a background here. I'm gonna delete it. Good. We're gonna resave this. Save. Let's head back over here and hope everything started working. It looks like it may have. Uh, I'll go like that. And now we'll put the trees in front of it so that they'll be the closest layer to us. Uh, where's our trees, trees, foreground. Here's my trees. My trees are very long and I want them so they kind of get out of the way. They're also gonna have to move the fastest. So let's go back here and we'll put them, um, yeah, we'll start them there. Let's key their position, they're right here, foreground, transform, key it, and we'll get all the way to the end, and they have to move further than everybody else. Uh, hopefully, let, let me see if that's enough of them. We will find out very quickly, actually. No, see, they're moving too slow. I actually am going to stretch them out. Good. And I'm going to make them move a lot faster. I should say a lot further, actually. We'll start them here. That's better. And we'll have them get on the last frame to here, let's say. Now let's take a look at that. 
Uh, when I use my previews, by the way, they loop, which is good. Okay. Now, think about that in terms of the Terry Gilliam stuff and think of what he would have had to do to do the same thing, which would have been every frame cutting it and changing it and putting it back and forth. So you can see we have much better tools today to do this, which is great. Um, you don't have to use this gag, but it's used a lot. Think of all the cartoons you've seen with chase scenes where they have these multiple layers of stuff going by. This is the way that works. Um, let me uh, stop this capture here.